it's, I'm going to hand over to you now as the moderator. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, you've done very well. And so our very own participants, thank you for the time so far. And, um, and thank you for those dance. I saw some people moving. I saw Claire dancing and I saw somebody rose from South Africa requesting that we should do an additional song. We wish to, but for the sake of time, we just have to move on. I hope you're all enjoying yourself and learning and improving, growing at the same time. Um, without wasting much of our time, um, I'd like to go into what we have for the next section, which is um, the soft skill. It will be the second soft skill for um, the wisdom workshop, but the first for today. And um, will be the, the title is going to be Gathering Resources for Land Management Project. It will last for 15 minutes presentation. And um, to take this section is going to be Justice Mohando from special, the Special Collective. Justice, you have the floor, please. You have 15 minutes for the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me just try and share my screen. Uh, can everyone see? Oops. Yes. Okay, so yeah, let me just get this with. Yeah. So um yeah, as thank you, David. Uh as you as you said, uh, my name is Justice Mohando and I'm a geospatial engineer um based in Nairobi, Kenya and the uh, technical lead at uh, Spatial Collective. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege to speak to you today. And, uh, you know, uh, professionally, I'm a member of this uh, institution of surveyors of Kenya. So um, I'm really honored to be speaking to fellow young surveyors. Uh, apart from my survey work, uh, I really enjoy hiking. So as a matter of fact, today we're supposed to go to some range uh, in Dabadea on Kinangok, but you know, that is a challenge for another day. Uh, moving uh, on, um, I work with an amazing team at Spatial Collective. And if I'm to give a quick pitch about us, it's uh, we support communities and organizations to collect uh, data that is useful to them. So, you know, we've been uh, uh, lucky enough to work in uh, various countries uh, in the world uh, on a wide range of projects. Uh, for example, uh, we've worked in uh, informal settlements uh, in Nairobi, just helping uh, the communities uh, and uh, even businesses uh, map the, the service of geog uh, the geography of service delivery within their communities. Uh, we have also worked with communities in, uh, in you know, in uh, more rural areas where we had a, we had a project in Lamu. We worked with the communities to help them uh, map the indigenous resources so that they can be able to understand the impact of a big port that is being built uh, in their area. Uh, we have also trained uh, dozens of uh, students in uh, different countries. So ranging from Ecuador, uh, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, and Tanzania. And uh, we've also worked in property rights, which is, uh, which is going to be the topic of uh, discussion today. Uh, we are currently supporting the government of Zanzibar in their land adjudication project. So uh, our setting will be in Zanzibar and uh, I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but you've only heard of it, you know, because it's a more touristy place, uh, pristine beaches, you know, world heritage sites. But uh, this is a, this is home to around 1.5 million people, and it's uh, you know it's rapidly urbanizing, so the the city is growing faster, and you know the, the small villages are, are are also urbanizing and uh, quickly developing. 
So as with uh, most uh, African countries, we hold our land in customary tenure. So this is where, you know, our land is uh, passed on from generation to generation. And in a way, most of it is uh, undocumented. Uh, uh, this has caused the, you know, uh, the government is having a, a bit of a challenge uh, in, in land management. So uh, managing this rapid urbanization, uh, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, most of its land is undocumented. And in another way, it also hinders the, the, the citizens' ability to use the land, you know, for you know, eco economic development as, a, as an asset per se. So in this case, I mean, you know, you can go with your title to, to the bank, get a, a loan to, you know, to develop the land or, you know, uh, uh, use it for, you know, a variety of reasons. So um, the government down there has been really keen on, uh, land management projects or projects that will help them um, move this idea forward and help them quickly uh, document their land. So um, with that in mind, I'd, 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 I'd just like us to keep uh, the, the idea in mind because uh, uh, this project, you know, it evolved in a way, it's, it's, it's a bit kind of a story. So I'd just like to take you through the, the different pieces and in a way it ties into the the, the topic of the day where we are gathering sources, resources for, for, for land management projects. So uh, at around, I think it was somewhere in uh, 2016, early 2017, when you know, drones were still uh, being experimented and tested out for, for, for surveying purposes uh, the, through, a, a, the, through the, the government had this project uh, to, to map the whole island you know, using drones. So this was the first thing that they ever did and they used the, the EB drones uh, just first to see what they can be able to do. And they were successful in it uh, in that they were able to collect uh, high resolution imagery for the whole island. And uh, you know, the first of its kind since the, the, the aerial photography that was done way back during the you know, late sixties. So they were happy with this, and if I may, if I may paraphrase their words, you know, they, they said we can now see where things are in our island. So you know that helped them collect one the first piece of the resource that they needed moving forward to the land management projects. Then after they had this, they had this idea. Now that we can see where things are, you know, we want to see them in a more GIS environment. And they were eager, you know, to, to you know, like to extract information from this high-resolution imagery that they have. So the first thing that they decided to do was extract all the buildings from the from the imagery. So this is just to see where are people on our island, where do people live, how is it growing, and they did it in an innovative way, which is kind of being used out there, like in OpenStreetMap and other, you know, humanitarian mapping activities. It was more of a you know a crowdsourced approach. By crowdsourced, I mean we train dozens of uh, students from the universities, and uh, you know the digital communities also. We worked with them and trained them, at, and uh, people from the government uh, to digitize all the buildings and other you know, uh, features from this uh, uh, drone image. So this was the first ever building footprint that they had. The latest one they could see. You know, in, in, in their words, where are people on our island? Mm. These two activities kind of uh, sort of also built the stage in terms of uh, uh, building local capacity. So as I said, we trained uh, uh, dozens of uh, students that were working with, uh, interacted with digital communities to help us with this crowdsourced effort. And, uh, you know, in a way it also uh, brought about champions from within. So by champions, I mean people from within the community or uh, people from within the government who see the potential of having, you know, innovative geospatial technologies to be able to quickly you know, document their land or, you know, generate data that is useful in, you know, in various uh, sectors of the government. So a resource as a, uh, just the official buy-in that uh, it helped us get that. So. Those two activities helped us build that and you know at the back of our mind they had this idea of how can we able now to you know pivot this into a, a to be able to collect land 
So, and they had this uh, idea of land adjudication where they'll start collecting all this undocumented land uh, and convert it into, you know, uh, something that they can be able to use uh, for their land management purposes. Uh, so together with the, together with the, with the mapping agency down in Zanzibar, so we had this uh, the vision. What was our vision to, to, to do this? So in, in our way was, you know, we have, pilot, we have kind of tested uh, a, a community-based approach, a crowdsourced approach, use of, uh, you know, handheld GPS, uh, mobile phones to collect data. So our vision for this uh, land management project was, you know, train dozens of community members in using the cheap, cheaply available uh, devices to be able to collect land. And also additionally, to, to you know, upskill the current surveys who are there so that they can be able to oversee this uh, dozens of data community collectors. In a way, this will speed up the, the process. Uh, our end goal was to, you know, to create, to start the process of creating a digital land database and, uh, you know, in another way to provide the title deeds or certificates of occupancy to the, to the people. Uh, in, this, in, in the same breath, we carried out a user needs assessment. This is just to understand the process and to see how best we can fit in an innovation, you know, just special innovation into the whole adjudication process as it is. And we quickly found out, you know, the, that the methods they use are really updated and cannot keep up with the demand. And also, you know, there's a big disconnect between the survey process and the registration process. So people will just, uh, a survey would have to go to the field and, you know, the landowner would go to the office and then there was just uh, 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 a big disconnect. So from the user needs assessment... Sorry to... Sorry, just I'm sorry to um, interrupt you. I just want to uh, keep you tab on the time. You have five minutes to yes. wrap up so that we can answer some questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Is you. That okay, Ray. Yeah, I'm okay. I'll, I'll I'll try and go through. So yeah, um, the next thing we did, the user needs assessment helped us understand the tools that we need. So you know, we had the vision of using mobile phones and having many uh, uh, tablets and having many people be out there collect. Uh, before we also went out, we, we made sure that this will, will meet the legal threshold in terms of data accuracy and the data quality that we are collecting. So before we even stepped to the field, we made sure that we have our tools and resources, uh, our tools and workflow in place and, you know, uh, okay. So on the ground, uh, land projects are mostly, you know, interaction with the community. So for us, key was, you know, public awareness, having people know what is going on. So this involved radio announcements or having a track with uh, speakers just going through the community and you know, sensitizing people who are, what is happening. So uh, in, a, in the breadth of you know, using the community-based approach, you also searched for our, our data co collectors from within the community. So these are young people who are tech savvy. These days, everyone has a phone and they can quickly understand this. So this was to, you know, help the community, you know, uh, accept the project and be able, be willing, you know, to participate in it. Uh, the same way also uh, the community leaders, they have, uh, they have, you know, the wealth of knowledge as regards to land and how it moves because it's, you know, it's more of a, uh, a customary way. So they have this uh, idea, they know who owns what, where. So we also included them in our activity and they proved an important resource. Uh, another thing that we found really key was, you know, uh, because we had the idea of having this uh, land adjudication from the community uh, level, so it's also sourcing for tools and resources and manpower from within. So by this I mean, you know, before to, to do an actual demarcation that is recognized, you have to place a beacon on the ground. So we found all these materials from within the community and, you know, in a way created local employment in the community. And, uh, you know, to place all these beacons on the ground, also the manpower is sourced it from the local community. So this in a way helped the whole, you know, activity uh, feel owned by the community that resources are coming from here, manpower is coming from here. And, you know, uh, it's something that is going to benefit us in the long run. After we put all these things together, um, you know, uh, th th these are just pictures of how our field work went. So it involved uh, the, the surveyor being there, 
and uh, some of the uh, the community members uh, being open and ready to 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 participate in the activity and uh, the, the 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 good thing with this was you know it it also um helped them the by the community to 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 reduce the costs that they incur when they are having uh, land adjudication projects. So people, it's like the government is coming to you to collect information and you do not have to incur any cost, uh, which was not the case as before. So uh, we we did some field work and uh, I, we achieved some of our goals, which was to, you know, uh, uh, speed up the process of uh, land adjudication to collect you know as, ma, uh, 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 as much data as possible so in our case we had uh, we did uh, 700 uh, parcels in around uh, six weeks this is factoring also we had to stop for due to the pandemic because it had started and then they also the other advantage was all this information was digital and we were able to you know they were able to go through the next steps quickly because you already have a full data set that can go to the next steps of uh, land registration for uh, title deeds. Uh, just to recap, um, for, in my opinion, I think resources are not only you know, the tangible things that we can touch, but also the, you know, the intangible things that go into the, the whole you know, uh, project that you want to build. And something that I haven't mentioned is you know, finances. Finances are a key thing that you have to uh, to factor in. For our case, we were lucky enough to be with a grant from Cadasta and uh, Cities Alliance that help us facilitate uh, this activity. Uh, I think I've gone through a bit quickly, but I'm happy to welcome any questions. Okay, thank you, Justus. Um, that was a nice presentation. And um, yes, I saw some questions um rolling on the charts and uh, i will just take some why we use uh, the metimeter come say i hope we have the metimeter on to take some questions also uh yeah the, the, there are so many questions i'm not really sure where to start from <laughs> on the chat i'm just trying to see Okay, yeah, I, I think I'll take from the last one that says, um, what right of occupancy do, did you aim to provide to citizen? Maybe you can just answer that in maybe just 30 seconds. Yes, so um, by rights of occupancy, this is, a, you know, it's a legal title deed that, that gives you the right to, you know, to own the land and uh, carry out development on it. So that is what we were after. On the, that was our end goal, what we're trying to do. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Then I, I remember one of the questions that also talks about the accuracy of the drone mapping. Is that yes. in consideration? Yes, yes, yes. So um, this was uh, put into consideration that I think I, 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 I might have briefly mentioned it where we, we tested our tools. Uh, in our case, we had drone imagery, which was uh, seven centimeter uh, the GSD. So this is pretty accurate to be able to do you know, a general boundary survey that requires uh, three, less than, you know, three meter accuracy. And also, you know, having the devices enabled uh, the, the, us to, uh, having mobile devices enabled us capture the location well. And just to add on it, we tested it and uh, it, uh, based on the, the government's the set requirements for land registration, we did meet that threshold for accuracy and data quality. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. There's another question that says, what mode of sanitization did you find to be most effective? By sanitize sensitization. Ah, that? okay. Okay. So, um, the, yeah. I think the, the best mode of sensitization, uh, we mostly is, you know, the community interaction, the day to day interaction, that is what I would say is important. And this is, I feel, key you you should have you know people from the community actually doing the data collection they are the best sensitizers you know you can have a public forum where the the government officials or land officials come but you know every day meeting uh, people this requires uh, people from within the community 
who they can talk about it, you know, be open about everything that is happening. So I think that if you ask me, I'll say that is the best uh, method of sensitization. Okay, thank you. Then I think the last question that I have from Aaron says, when discussing centralized repositories, did you have any issue with data sharing agreements or sensitive information? If so, how, how do you deal with this? Maybe in some seconds, can you answer? Yes, so um, as you know, uh, land data or uh, th this, this is, it, 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 it pertains to people and there's some data security required to it. So yes, we, 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 with the government, we did work out a way of data sharing agreements and uh, you know a way to protect the data that is being collected that the, the, the integrity of the data that's collected to the field will be the same when it gets to the office and will be the same once the titles are produced so yes oh, okay the, yeah okay then uh also i want to someone wants to know if you feel three meters of crazy method of documentation is safe enough for proper documentation when it comes so, to um, land it, use and land, yeah, you can carry on. Yeah, um, the, the, you know, uh, as with land and uh, the previous speaker mentioned about it, it's, it all comes down to fit for purpose, you know. And uh, if, we want to, if we want to get, uh, you know, uh, two millimeter accuracy, but then you're, you're registering land that is somewhere in the rural areas, you know, I think that is the same as, you know, uh, it's overkill. That's how I describe it. It's a bit of overkill. So we did uh, we did assess our situation, and as I've said, you know, it met the legal threshold to be able to you know document that land. And also, okay. we, yeah, and also just to add on it, we our process included placing of beacons on the ground. So if someone wants to come and do a high accuracy survey later, so you know all those provisions were taken care of. But for now, what we did was, you know, where are people and who owns this land and, you know, meeting the minimum set accuracy requirements. Okay, thank you very much, Justice. It's good to have you. This is the much I can take from the questions. We we'll have to use the Metimeter. Um, Kamsi, um, do we have the Metimeter on for people to interact with? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll try and answer some of the questions I'm seeing on the chat. Uh, thank you all, and it's been an honor. Yeah.